Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Norbert Murakami. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we are challenged and reminded of our prophetic role in the person of Jeremiah and of Christ. Many times we fail to respond to God's call and to be prophetic in ways that God expects us to. For those times that we have failed to do so, let us ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we, we adore you, we, we give you, you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, our God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a resistance all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. For you, my soul is thirsting. O oh Lord, Lord, my God. O oh God, you are my God. At dawn I seek you. For you, my soul is thirsting. For you, my flesh is pining, like a dry, weary land without water. 
For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. I have come before you in the sanctuary to behold your strength and your glory. Your loving mercy is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. For For you my soul soul is thirsting, O Lord Lord, my my God. I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. With joyful lips my mouth shall praise you. For For you my soul soul is thirsting, O Lord Lord, my my God. God. For you have been my strength. In the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. For For you, you, my my soul soul is is thirsting, thirsting, O Lord, Lord, my my God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we might know what is the hope to which he has called us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of God the Father. And then... He will repay every man for what he has done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I reflected on the first reading of today, I imagined Jeremiah as a young man having plans of his own, a career like other young men of his time. Perhaps he also wanted to have a wife, a family, a few good friends, and some wealth. But God called him to be a prophet. And Jeremiah came on the scene when the Babylonians were about to conquer Jerusalem. 
He predicted the fall of the city. He was disappointed because people were worshipping false gods. The kingdom of Judah was engaging in political alliances to try and save itself. He was also unhappy because the people neglected those who were in most need, the poor. Why does he grumble? After 50 years, he had so little to show for his effort. He had a few converts, only one disciple, many enemies. People didn't respect him, rather they were downright hostile to him. His family thought he was nuts. The king wanted him dead. The chief officer of Jerusalem temple had Jeremiah arrested and flogged for proclaiming that the city would be destroyed for its lack of faith. He was also chased from the city into exile. So we see a distressed, angry man, not only with the people, but also with God. He complains that God duped him. He feels sorry for himself. Jeremiah did not suffer in silence, no. He complained in line after line in the scripture, so showing how he was mistreated by others. He never tried to stop preaching, but he could not help himself. But what's important is that in the end, Jeremiah came to realize that God was in charge and he put his trust in him despite his difficulties. Centuries later, in today's gospel, Peter gets shocked at Jesus speaking of himself being killed in Jerusalem. Peter had hoped that Jesus was to bring a new kingdom and that the work of being a disciple would eventually reward them. Perhaps he envisioned himself in good comfort, enjoying power and wealth as royal families of his time were. Perhaps he saw his life as an investor waiting to strike it rich on an investment. Come to think of it, a few moments earlier, Jesus called Peter the rock on which he would build his church. This was palatable to Peter's ears. It was the good news he longed for. So, for Peter to hear Jesus almost in the next breath for telling that he would die, that was unwelcome. Peter did not want to hear that. What about his and other disciples' plans? That's not what he envisioned. That's not what he left his fishing career for. That's not what he wanted as an, in, as an investment. The way Peter becomes a stumbling block and stands in Jesus' way. He made far too many assumptions about God's values. He didn't see how suffering can be part of this grand plan, of this divine plan. Surely not his plan. He couldn't imagine that God might make use of human suffering for God's divine plan. Not here that the Lord does not announce only the cross, but also the resurrection. In effect, he announces the pattern of the Christian life, which we have to come to call the Paschal mystery. But Peter is not listening. You can almost imagine Peter in front of Jesus saying, Oh no, Lord, God forbid. Then at that point, Jesus calls Peter a stumbling block. He told him to get off his face, to get behind him, where the disciples belong. Following the master is not standing in front and giving him directions. It is being behind him 
and following him and following his, his directions. Jesus makes it clear that being faithful to God implies that personal plans and feelings do not count when they conflict with God's will and God's plans. Like Peter, how many times in our lives have we forgotten our position as followers and went ahead of the Lord? How often have we made life plans and then invited God only to approve them instead of following his will? Do we even care what the Lord's will is in our lives or we have better plans for ourselves? In John 12, if we read verse 24, Jesus says, Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. It produces many fruits. Unless we die to ourselves and our selfish desires, we remain a single seed, fruitless and a stumbling block in God's divine plan. Let us reflect today on ways in which we are stumbling blocks to the Lord. Is it in the way we conform to the passing present age, limited by our short-sightedness, as the second reading suggests? It is fashionable today to be practical and see right and wrong identified with convenience. Do we stand up for what is right, even when everyone goes against us, or we shy away from the truth and lose our prophetic voice? When the calling of God is difficult, saints do not quit. When faced with challenges and difficulties and opposition, that's when the Lord calls us to play our prophetic roles, a role we assumed at baptism. For example, when everyone I associate with steals from the poor, as a Christian, do I have the courage to stand and defend the poor or I suppress my prophetic role and join the rest? When I see abuses of any kind, do I shy away rather than not get involved? Or I prefer to take part so that I identify with those who are doing evil. Here is the truth. We cannot stand against who we are. If I am corrupt, I cannot stand against corruption. I would rather conform. If I am an abuser, I cannot speak against abuse because it is something about who I am. So I rather keep my peace. Only those who truly answer God's prophetic call change the world and are willing to serve, to sacrifice, and to deny themselves for the greater good. Jeremiah's acceptance of his mission and Jesus' acceptance of his mission are today's examples of courage for us to emulate as we strive to live our individual missions. May God bless all the women and grant them the courage to be prophetic as we honor them this month of August. In faith and trust, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to God with our petitions and prayers, not to rebuke him as Peter did, but hopeful that we can be thinking as God does and not as humans. For Pope Francis, that he may be kept safe and be inspired by the Holy Spirit as he brings the message of the gospel to all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. That church leaders and all people may be resolute in seeking universal peace, a peace that will last and that will offer safety and security to all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the rights of women may be respected everywhere. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That all people may experience God's hand of comfort in the difficulties we face and receive the grace to overcome these difficulties with prayer, patience, and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For people suffering because of the pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, that they may receive the help they need to restore normalcy to their lives and be renewed in mind to discern the will of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the faithful departed, that sharing the cross of Christ, they may also share his victory over death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O oh God, we join with Jeremiah in crying out in outrage against violence and injustice, a cry that brings us scorn and reproach. May your fire burn strong in our hearts and not be imprisoned in our bones as we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. This is the God of bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. This is the God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessings of salvation, that what, is, what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness of our sins, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Booty and Duncan our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, happy are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, our mass is ended. Thanks, thanks to God.